Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordo. We are the founders of Lumia. And we're super passionate about all things coaching, and we want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training thousands of life coaches. Let's dive into the science and magic of coaching. On today's episode, a really interesting topic, a longer title, and that is how to talk to people in your world about becoming a life coach. Noel, good morning. Hello. Three cups of coffee for you. I'm on two. Yeah. Well, the different time zones will do that to us. Hey, do you, um, because you and I are both coffee people, do you think you'll ever uh, stop coffee or switch to tea? Or are you good as in accepted that coffee is just going to be a rest of your life thing? I I think it's going to be a rest of my life thing. And, you know, that's also when I hold it up against my other vices that I'm trying to limit. And I'm like, nah, coffee's fine. (laughs) Right. I, um, I tried to quit a couple of times, but, um, now I've accepted that, uh, you know, morning is coffee and sometimes I get to, uh, where you get three or four cups. Um, and it's just, it's become nectar for me. It's all good. It is good. And I enjoy coffee. I try to cap it at 2 PM. That's my cutoff. Well, I'm not a quitter. I go to, I go to 8 PM. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> man. Oh, wow. All right. Well, let's talk about telling people that you're going to be a a life coach. I love this topic because, uh, you know, when we tell people, especially our friends, a lot of times we get eye rolls, we get no support, we get, uh, you know, the dial tone. Yeah, it's it's friends, it's family. And this is a really common thing that our coaches experience. And so we wanted to address it. There's a really fabulous piece on our blog that details, everything that we're going to talk about today and more. And it's a really rich conversation for you and I to have to both demystify the experience and then get some real talk in there for tactics that people can use to share information that's actually accurate around life coaching and build support for themselves. Well, first, why do you think um, people respond the way they do when you tell them you're going to be a life coach because it's very different than say, if you say, um, you know, I I'm going to be a therapist or a doctor or, you know, something with, uh, um, degrees. Well, I might posit that, uh, that that's an assumption. And the, I'd say if you and I were having this conversation, even two years ago, there might be more of an eye roll associated with life coaching because the idea of it wasn't fully conceptualized in the public's consciousness. Today, the landscape is really different. There are a lot of jobs that are being created around coaching. There are so many firms that represent coaches. A lot of individuals are seeking coaches. Talking about working with a coach is really common. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, um, I've often said uh, to people in my life, you know, ah, maybe one day I'll finish that law degree or man, you know, I could go back and just wrap up my PhD. And my husband has said, I will leave you if you go after another degree. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I think, you know, the bottom line is, is that anything new is different and weird for folks. And any kind of change is different and weird for for folks. And when we think about life coaching, it can be a trope that, oh, you're going to become a life coach. And also the landscape is um, shifting rapidly. What do you see? Well, you know, I think uh, you're going to get a different response. And and I think you're right. I think it's uh, uh, me jumping to conclusions, assuming and also, I think it's me comparing how it used to be to how it is now. Um, I don't think I, I uh, uh, am aware of how uh, the business of life coaching is growing and how it's you know uh, how much it's been accepted and it's everywhere now. So um, I think I am pulling from you know um, me beginning ten years ago and, and and the pushback. So I think the one word that will change someone's response is the word life. I think if you say, um, I'm going to be a life coach, you might get pushed back. Uh, But if you say, hey, I'm going to be a divorce recovery coach, I'm going to be an addiction coach, I'm going to be a mindfulness coach, you usually get a lot of support, especially if it's tied to your story. Because to me, that holds more than letters after your name. 
you know, and especially、uh, friends and family who know you obviously know what you've gone through. So, if you are now taking what you've gone through and now helping other people, it's such a noble thing. You know, who's gonna eye roll? And if you do get eye rolls, and now now it's coming from you know jealousy and other other、uh, places that have nothing to do with you. Absolutely, and if folks who are are listening who are thinking, well, I might not know what kind of coach I'd like to be. I like to use the word professional. Uh, when folks ask me what I do, I say I'm a professional coach. Ooh, I like、um, that. It's so simple. It's so simple, and and it it really does account for every different aspect of my life in which I employ coaching. It's it's what I do. It's who I am. I am a professional coach. Yeah, and you know what? I also、um, I like that because the coach is also announcing to herself that she's going pro. Oh think, yeah. You know, Because that's another thing I think a lot of um, um, coaches starting out can struggle with is can I do the you know self doubt imposter syndrome and all that. So if you make a habit of saying, "Listen, I'm I'm a professional coach,"、um, you're telling yourself that you're legit. Absolutely. So this 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 point that we're we're sitting on, I think that this falls into the bucket of you know the common objection that people face, which is the person on the other end, the person that's that's hearing the "I'm going to become a blank" doesn't have enough information, and、mm-hmm. so just as you're saying, you know, hey, figure this out for yourself, figure out the language. We also have to consider that.、Um, The the listener might need more factual information about the field of coaching, and then tracking that back to the why, because fears are natural. And when we're talking about life coaching and an emerging、um, field, if you haven't done the homework to answer these questions for yourself, and you're just kind of trying to process out loud with folks, you might not be getting accurate information back in return. Right. So. Some common questions that I think come up all the time when we're in the nobody has enough information realm of things are:、um, Is coaching a viable career path?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like number one. Number one, and then if this is somebody in your life in your household, how much is training going to cost? Can we afford it?、Mm-hmm. Um, are we going to be able to cover living while you transition your careers? How much time will this take? How will our family be impacted? But what about your existing career? And all of these things are really valid points. And something that I love to highlight when we have these conversations is that we're talking about the challenges that people face when they're becoming a coach. But that exact same set of questions is often very present for clients trying to do pretty much anything. You know, say somebody came home to their partner and said, "You know, I think I want to become、um, an expert mountain climber." Well, how much is it going to cost? This <laughs> is a really viable next question. And so, this this set of fears and questions, the kind of the exploration that we need to do and get into, happens across the board. What do you think of this set of questions? Because to me, these are questions that any good stakeholder in somebody else's life would want to ask. These are valid questions. Uh, these are、um, practical questions. They're, they're questions I think、uh, we need to know the answer to. Yeah, absolutely. So, so they're kind of like no BS questions. They're no they're BS questions. Yeah, yeah. And getting a, a, a game plan together ahead of time is is really important, and that that's. That requires a little bit of exploration on on your end, and as you alluded to, you know, really defining your why,、um, thinking about what kind of coach you might want to be. So,、um, a great coach is somebody who partners with their clients. So, I might say to the person who wants to become a coach, "What's in it for you? What is it about coaching that draws you in?" When you started, John, what was going on for you, and what was the landscape life? And what did you what did you hear? What did people say to you? Yeah, so when I started coaching,、um, wasn't what it is now, and、uh, I I always compare it to skimboarding and surfing. And I'll just say this real quick.、Uh, so skimboarding is、uh, when you throw this kind of like flat board、um, on the sand, and then the momentum takes you into the ocean, and you ride the shore break. Right? Surfing. I mean, obviously, everyone knows what surfing is.、Um, I really wanted to surf, but I had this water phobia, 
and I used to skate, so I knew I would be good at it, but I couldn't go, you know, swim out into the sea and, and past the, the waves because if a fish uh, grazed my, my shin, I would, like Jesus, run on, walk on water back to the, run on, back, run on the water back to the shore. But, uh, but, I, but I found skimboarding and uh, I got really good at it and I loved it, but the surfers thought skimboarding was a joke mm. because although it's very difficult, you weren't out riding waves. You were just kind of on the shore break. It was like, you know, it's like skateboarding on, in the water. And um, when I started, therapists were like surfers and coaches were like skimboarders. And uh, their member therapists would look down on coaching, um, partly because they probably thought that, um, you know, here, here, here are people who hop the fence that didn't pay, you know, the, the money to take the exam and all this kind of stuff to get the hours and, you know, all go, go to grad school. Um, so my experience with coaching was, um, was loaded. It was tilted. It was, uh, uh, labeled because of, of that, you know, about 12 years ago. And then I embraced becoming a coach because I realized that in the clinical world, there were a lot of shoots and there was a lot of red tape and things I couldn't do. And if I wanted to practice in a way that felt honest to me, um, I would have to wear the, uh, the hat of a coach. And so I did. And that one decision um, repositioned my career where now today um, – I don't have any kind of like confines, you know, I don't have like, I, I, I run my practice, I run, write my books, I do my, you know, my social, my podcast, everything I do is just uh, kind of like what I want to do. And that's all because um, I can wear the hat of a coach. Oh, hell yeah. So I'm, I'm going to share some stories too. And they have to do with my own actual experience with surfing and skimboarding. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't know that we uh, had had a connection there. But wow! Okay. Oh yeah, and it, it's tied into you know my early experiences with coaching. So um, my dad is a really cool guy. He and I have a great relationship. Um, he used to race motorcycles. He mm. used to be um, a pro surfer back in the early days. He was one of the people that pioneered longboarding on the East Coast. So you I and I both, that. yeah. Wow. You and I both grow up on with oceans nearby, just different coasts. And, um, I'm, I'm not naturally graceful or athletic. I never really had the upper body strength in order to pull myself up or push myself up kind of like a burpee style onto a surfboard. And I would just you know, wipe out consistently. Although I'm not afraid of the water. Um, I'm terrified of skateboarding. Mm -hmm. I can't stay on one. And my dad built me a skim board out of plywood and this is, you know, classic. My father makes me this beautiful thing says, you know, here's something for you to do. Um, I want you to be safe. I want you to have fun, but he didn't tell me or think about the fact that I had to wax the skim board mm -hmm. <laughs> in order to, to stay on the damn thing. Yeah. And so when I hopped on it for the first time, of course, my feet skidded out over oh. that uh, combo of water and freshly varnished wood. And oh. I like went up in the air, somersaulted and wiped out in the sand and water harder than I ever had in my life. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that's a metaphor for when I told my dad that I wanted to become a life coach. We were driving to, um, we were driving out, uh, to go off-roading on the beach in his Jeep. And I said, Hey dad, I think I want to become a life coach and same deal. He didn't think or contextualize, you know, what his kid might need to make an informed decision. He just went right in with, you know, that's not a real thing because mm -hmm. he wanted to protect me. And that was the first real, um, that was, he was the first person I ever told of my desire. And that was the first response that I, that I ever had. And, you know, for me, as we're thinking about skimboarding, surfing, being in the water, doing what you want to do with your time, the reason that I wanted to get into coaching at that exact moment in time is because I was just beginning to overcome my own eating disorders through positive psychology. Mm -hmm. And I believed 
as I still do today, wholeheartedly, that there was a discipline and a space on the other side of therapy for people to process and take action and actually build um, a temple out of the lumber of their lives. And that's what I wanted to do with my time. And the reason that I'm sharing this story is because when you want to do something with your life, it ties so deeply into knowing what the vision for your life is. Mm. Um, when I was listening to your story, what came up for me really deeply is um, John doesn't want to be in deep water. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so it seems counterintuitive or unproductive to think of forcing you into a surfing position as a therapist when you don't want to be in the water. Yeah. And I wonder how much of that is me um, be growing up with, you know, uh, movies, as, you know, uh, the image of surfers being cool. And that's, you know, like, like, like if you surf, that's cool. If you skimboard, you're not cool. So I wonder how much of, of me, um, being pulled into the deep waters, uh, even though that's not my ability or truth, had to do with uh, outside forces, the external. And I, because I think there's a, some, of, I think there's some of that that uh, plays into to wellness when it comes to therapists and life coaches. Absolutely. And so, you know, as we're coaching folks through talking about this with people in their lives, when you know, one of the things that's really important is to be super honest, not only with yourself but with the people around you, and say, "This is who I am." You know, this is what I do want. This is what I don't want. And this is how I see myself. And this is the future that I see for myself. You know, so taking the time to craft your future vision of what is your life going to be like as a coach for me, because I had a clinical background, I, uh, I studied social work. I've studied um, different tenets of therapy in my PhD. And what I discovered along the way is something I knew about myself that I'm very sensitive and also that it might not be a good idea for me to become a therapist and process trauma all day long, mm -hmm. that it's, I'm naturally optimistic. I love, love. I love joy. I, I believe so hard in people and that's the mindset that I need to live in. And so when I frame it that way to people in my life, you know, well, why didn't you finish your PhD? Well, it would be really bad for me if I stayed in a room and processed trauma all day long. But what I've done instead is live my core essence of attaching to the positive aspects of life and helping people build bright futures. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. I think many people hearing this um, can get inspired by what you just said. Absolutely. And, you know, the other piece of it that we touched on a little bit, but I think we need to go back to is, you know, what goes on for folks when they shit on somebody else's dreams? Because, mm. you know, that's a really hard, um, that's a really hard question. And my dad and I have had a lot of conversations about his early responses to me and yeah. even his early responses to entrepreneurship. You know, when I was a CEO um, in those first couple of years, he would say things to me like, when are you going to get a real job? Right. right, right. Um, and so, Many folks, most folks are scared of risk. And when there's somebody that we love who's about to take a risk, what happens in very real terms to our brain is that if we can't conceptualize or if we don't have any memory bank of what the other person is talking about, we automatically feel fear because it's easier for our brain's to attach to comfort with things that we already know. And so if we don't have enough information, if something is foreign to us, playing it safe, don't rock the boat is the is a human default. It's not right. person specific. It's all of us. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think um, there's a lot of power in the announcement. So going back to our topic, uh, when you tell people that um, you're becoming a coach or this is something you want to do, um, you're actually rocking the boat. <laughs> you're rocking, you're rocking other people's boats. You're rocking other people's boats. All right. So here's the way to combat that is laying out the argument and taking all of 
the things that we know and love about ourselves and that we have accomplished our strengths, our talents, our experience, and tying them to how we are going to be both successful and effective as coaches. Mm. You want to play that game with me? Sure. Let's do it. All right. So John, yes. you are a successful coach. Um, what you. are you are welcome? What are some touch points? If we had to wipe, wipe your success away and pretend that, you know, right now you're in your kitchen and you're, you're telling your partner, Vanessa, I'm going to do, I'm going to become a coach mm -hmm. looking back on your life. What are some things that you have done or experienced that would really build a case for the fact that this is aligned with you? Oh, um, running groups. Um, so I, I feel like I have a knack for running groups. Uh, so less individual, but more group work. Um, helping people with breakups and relationships um, just because of, of uh, you know, me uh, going through my rebirth and divorce. Um, and then, and then I don't, you know, the other thing that comes to my mind, and, and this is a little bit obtuse, is um, writing. Mm. And so um, coaches can write. You know, so whether you're writing books or you're writing blogs or you're writing, you know, little Instagram posts, whatever it is, um, writing can also be a way uh, to help people indirectly. Yes. And there are other parts of your story that uh, I'm thinking about that would also lend to being a successful coach. And one of them is your experience with starting all different kinds of businesses. Mm. How do you think that that would contribute to your success as a coach? Yeah. Um, executing, uh, just doing, um, not allowing, you know, the, 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 the fear to leak in like tear gas. So when I have an idea, whether it's, you know, for a book or, a, or something on, on, on social media or for a company or whatever, um, to just go do it, go do it. And, and, uh, you know, uh, learn as you go build the bus while you're driving. That's always been, I mean, I've been doing that for the last decade and uh, that's at least for me, that's been um, a good thing. That's been, um, that's been helpful. Absolutely. And an another thing that I can think about is your experience uh, and your growth and your evolution about um, thinking of yourself in terms of um, your Korean ancestry that at one time, it, it, you knew and felt what it was like to be an outsider. And now you've kind of, you turned into seeing your difference as a superpower and something to be embraced. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up in the eighties, wanting to be white. Um, and then now embracing, um, kimchi and <laughs> Korea, you know, all the Korean things that I was embarrassed about. Now I, uh, I love and embrace. Yeah. And uh, thank you for modeling. So, uh, as you're listening to this, I encourage everyone to think about your own story because when when I talked to our coaches at, at Lumia, I had a really beautiful conversation with a prospective student this week. We talked about all of the different touch points of um, this human's experience, being a former um, sportscaster, having lost a child, having had a spiritual awakening, and just the depth and life course that this man has been on. Um, provides such rich soil to become a coach. And so that conversation around, well, what, what about my life has led me here mm -hmm. is a really important one to not only have with yourself, but to have with others, to be seen fully as, as human, as worthy, as capable, and um, very humbly saying, this is going to be good for me. Yeah, I like that. I like that you've brought it back to, um, to self and, um, to stand on it. Absolutely. And I, the thing I want to close out with on this topic is actually a coaching technique and it's, it might feel, um, a little bit weird because when somebody's giving you opposition, the last thing that we want to do is to really try to understand this person, but it's in our interest to empathy map and to really seek to fully understand from a 360 degree perspective, the other person in front of us who 
we need to understand in order to give this person the right information to generate Mm buy-in. So when we're empathy mapping, what you do is you think about this other person, what do they see and hear? What do they think and feel? You know, what do they say and do? So, you know, some questions to think about. How is this person directly impacted by my decision to become a coach? So in my case, thinking about my dad, you know, he's not. <laughs> he wants me, he wants me to, to be, be well and flourishing and happy in the world. But, you know, it's, it's not going to directly impact him. But that's not true of everyone. Um, what obligations do we share? you know, with the listener, with the person in front of us? Um, What concerns might they reasonably have? And what is my responsibility to meet those concerns? And this is a big one. This is one of the biggest questions. Do you or do you not have a responsibility to meet the concerns of the person who's giving you opposition? What Mm -hmm. do you think about this one? Having a a partner and a child and, and real stakeholders in your life? In what way? Do, do I uh, repeat that the question again? Yeah. So if, if we're empathy mapping the person in front of us, if, if you went home and said, you know, hey, Vanessa, I want to change my life direction. Um, what responsibility do you have to meet her concerns? Oh, um, I, 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 my only responsibility, I think, would be to um, listen to her and take in what she has to say or whatever. But I don't think I have a responsibility in the sense that um, it's my life and I'm expressing <laughs> what my desires are for my life. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, I, like it's hers to own. No, I, I don't, I don't, I shouldn't have to carry that. I'm so glad that she said that because I think oftentimes those messages get really confused for folks because Mm -hmm. there's an if then sequence. If I don't meet somebody else's expectations, then I'm bad or wrong Mm -hmm. or not doing my job as a partner. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the final question as we're thinking about other people relating to our decision to become a coach or not is if, if the person in front of me doesn't support me, Am I able to move forward anyway? If right. so, how? And if I can't, why not? What's getting in the way? Yeah. And um, I don't think we should answer those questions. Those are great questions. Um, they're lingering questions, you know? And so um, as you're listening to this, ask yourself these questions. Yeah. yeah. I think in answering them, you will have um, the answers on, on how you want to proceed. And food for thought. Um, if... If I had listened to the myriad, myriad of voices uh, that told me I should not proceed on the path that I chose for myself, we would have never built this company. We would not be on this podcast. John, if you had listened to naysayers and had followed the rules that were set forth for you, how would your life be different? I'd be wearing pants. I'd be, <laughs> um, I'd be tucking my shirt in and, you know, I, I think I would just be very grayed out and I would be, um, not, not, not really, um, truly living. I would be, uh, you know, the, uh, the ant in the ant farm, I would be the, uh, like you say, the social construction, the, uh, the, I'd have a cardboard box over my head. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's the gift that we can give ourselves first, because as you walk on the path of becoming a coach, you know, your job is to hang out with other people while they take the cardboard box of other people's rules and expectations off of their head. And you do it for yourself first when you make the choice to become a coach. And that experience of vitality and self-ownership and self-directedness is everything you need to pull from empathy when somebody else is, is working with you and they need to make a choice like that for themselves. Oh, I love that. Thank you for the um, important and meaningful conversation. I think uh, many people are going to uh, take a, a lot away from this. So thank yeah. you. You're yeah. welcome. We'll, we'll talk again. Yep. Thank you for listening. Be well. 
Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to lumiacoaching.com slash everything. Explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose, and a bold community to do it with. Lumia is ready to equip you with the tools, training, and community you will need to reach your goals. If you're ready to build a unique coaching business on your own terms while making an impact on the world at large, Lumia is the next bold step in your coaching journey. That's lumiacoaching.com slash everything. And hey, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it.